Tonight at 5, All-Star Interrupted. Ominous clouds and a live radar and cast out on the status of baseball's All-Star game. Mike Nelson's tracking conditions right up until the first pitch. Pandemic fatigue fans will not let a little rain keep them from Blake Street. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's something you dream of, so to be here um, experiencing it is, uh, you know, something special. While the players get revved up for the Midsummer Classic. It's, it's about your son, you know. Um, I, I just want to see him happy. We're talking to families about what love of the game truly means. What's it like for you to be with your dad right now? all this super fun super exciting first pitch of baseball's all-star game is now less than an hour away downtown denver is packed despite the threat of rain many more coloradans are settled in i believe with a bowl of popcorn <laughs> and the family and the tv and that may be more comfortable than venturing out the chance for rain extends beyond the metro the threat of flash floods has closed i-70 both directions through the mountains westbound is closed from dot Cerro to glenwood springs eastbound i-70 closed from <laughs> rifle to canyon creek Good evening, and thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Andrew Heath. And I'm Shannon Ogden. We're glad you're with us tonight. We'll get to our team on Blake Street in just a moment. We're going to begin with our chief meteorologist, Mike Nelson, and the latest conditions here on game night. Mike? I think we're going to be okay. This view behind me shows skies brightening a little bit over downtown Denver after some scattered showers move through. So the all-star game forecast does have a slight chance of storms. Temperatures are going to be comfortable in the 70s, and any delays that might happen should be brief. But the air quality should improve a little bit, and that's good news because most of the front range and the mountains under an ozone alert and wildfire smoke as well. There are the flash flood watches and warnings in effect up in the mountains around the burn scars. But let's focus in on Denver. The scattered showers and storms have kind of moved off a little bit, and there's only a little bit of activity that's still off to the west of us. Right now it is dry, a little breezy, it's cooled off, and there are a few scattered light showers off to the west, but they're trending to diminish. So I think as we get into the evening hours, the rain threat is pretty small. The skies will stay mostly cloudy, but the temperatures ought to be comfortable, and those winds will die down. Sounds good. Thank you. Downtown Denver businesses have been staffing up to keep up with all star demand. And while restaurant positions have been difficult to fill this summer, some places are getting creative. One man says he got lucky and stumbled across his job at Jackson's Lodo. I was actually in here on a Thursday night one time when they were understaffed and I asked uh, I asked if I could apply to be a bartender, but they said they weren't really there's a lot of bartenders. So they said uh, we need a lot. Of, we need servers. So I just applied, I put in the application that night when I was in here. And the job openings will hang around when the All-Stars are gone. There were more than 360 full-time jobs posted within five miles of Denver just over the last 24 hours. This is according to data provided from ZipRecruiter. More than half those jobs are promising at least $75,000 a year. And listen, the economic impact is nice, but let's be honest, most of us are excited to have the biggest party of the summer right here in town. That's right, Denver 7's Gary Brode is in the party downtown. Gary, looks like a family affair this evening. Hey, you just missed the band playing in the background too. The sun is coming out just in time for first pitch, which is going to happen here in about a half hour. Now look, we've obviously seen a lot of Rockies fans, but we've seen Mariners fans, Dodgers fans, and on the other coast, Yankees and Red Sox fans as well. Fans coming from far and wide to watch the game, see their favorite players, and as we found out, make some new memories with family. Hours before the first pitch of this year's All-Star Game, fans lined up outside Coors Field, waiting for the gates to open. We're a big baseball family. At the front of the line is the Gomez family. This is our hometown, and it was kind of easy to come here. And if we didn't come today, then we're never going to go to an All-Star game. These three siblings sat for nearly two hours in hopes of seeing their favorite players. I mean, we've been to a lot of like baseball things together, like as a family. So it kind of brings us closer together. Brandon Tatum and his 10-year-old son, Caden, stopped by Playball Park before heading for Coors Field. It's a first. It's very exciting. I can't wait. For this father and son, it's a weekend of bonding. It's, it's about your son, you know. Um, I, I just want to see him happy. want to see him have a good time. I want to give him something I never had. I want to give my son this opportunity to, to have some great experiences, you know, and that's, that's what it's about, making experiences. What's it like for you to be with your dad right now for all this? Super fun, super exciting. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I visit my dad like every summer, so going to the All-Star game will be fun. 
and the band is playing as you could uh, hear right now just started a few seconds ago so you know the party's really starting to go i gotta tell you though this is one of my favorite assignments and the reason being is because sports and family for me always kind of go hand in hand getting to go to a baseball game or any type of game with my father or my brothers always some of the best experiences in my life and clearly all of these folks behind me are about to create new memories ones that they're never going to forget and of course being at the all-star game certainly one that will be at the top of their list. Reporting live here from the Coors Field, I'm Gary Brode, number seven. Yep, that's what it's all oh, about, it's making so memories. Yeah. Love it. Gary, so thank you for that. Also, tonight it promises to be a showcase for Colorado. And you're going to hear a lot about how beautiful it is to live here and about the incredible atmosphere at Coors Field, but you'll also get to watch a lot of Colorado-grown baseball players make an impact at the highest level. Denver 7 Sports Director Lionel Bienvenu is at the stadium tonight, so what's the vibe out there where you are, Lionel? Hey guys, uh, I can give you a quick up to the second weather report. Not bad at all out here right now. The sun has come out, it's cool, great weather for the All-Star Game. Thank you, Nelson, we appreciate it. But look, the eyes of baseball are upon us right now. Denver, Coors Field, we put on a show for the last five days and it all comes down to this. The All-Star Game, the first pitch in just a few minutes inside there, and that'll cap off a whirlwind week. Now, it uh, continued with the purple carpet walk. That show was today. Players walking over from McGregor Square into Coors Field. Uh, Shohei Otani was the star attraction, the international man of mystery. Huh, Nolan got a nice welcome. And we talked to Giants pitcher Kevin Gaussman from Grandview High School, who had a custom-made Colorado jacket. And uh, we also had Mark Melanson from Wheat Ridge and Golden High School from the Padres who will play in this game tonight. And another local connection, Bo and Dante Bichette. Dante, the former Rocky star, a member of the Blake Street Bombers, he played in the 1998 All-Star Game at Coors Field. And then Bo, his son, shortstop for the Blue Jays, now playing in his first All-Star Game here 23 years later. What a story. And he's, uh... He's the man around here, so to be able to play in his, his stadium should be fun for my first All-Star game. It's really cool because I think I feel like I, I can see through his eyes. I know the sights he's going to see when he steps to the plate tonight, and it's just kind of surreal for me to, to see it. You know, 23 years ago, he was in my arms, and I was at the All-Star game, and here he is, so it's, it's really cool. That is awesome. And, of course, there's Rockies pitcher Herman Marquez, who make his All-Star debut tonight. After helping Nolan Arenado support Trevor Story last night in the home run derby, Herman's been as good as any pitcher the last few weeks, won his last five starts, almost threw a no-hitter, and Nolan told us he knew this was coming for Herman. Herman was one of my favorite teammates. Um, I was always rooting for him and always wanted him to do well. And um, I mean, he deserves this. He deserves this big time. So I'm just really happy for him. I mean, he's an elite pitcher. I mean, I've always thought that when we had him when I was here and uh, Obviously, what he's doing this year is special. I mean, we faced him last week, and he was he was on his game, man. He was unbelievable. All right, fans are still pouring in. The game just minutes away. We'll be back at 10 with the complete All-Star Game story for you on Denver 7 Sports. Right now, from Coors Field, let's go back to you in the studio. Loving all these family oh, stories. Gosh, great, oh, especially the Bichettes. Thanks, Lionel. That was so great. great. Thanks. Of course, politics are playing a unique role in this year's All-Star Game. Senate Republicans paid for ad time during last night's home run derby so they could attack Major League Baseball. The GOP says baseball unfairly moved the game out of Georgia due to a voting rights law. And that same ad is scheduled to run again tonight. It'll air on the same day President Biden publicly weighed in on the Republican effort to pass new voting rules in several states. He wants Congress to pass voting rights legislation immediately, he says, in the interest of democracy. 21st century Jim Crow assault is real. It's unrelenting. And we're going to challenge it vigorously. And the president's calls may fall on deaf ears. Senate Democrats do not have the votes to pass new voting rights rules. And the president says he doesn't want to get rid of the filibuster to make it happen. Next at 5. Unprecedented rapid rises in the price of certain goods. Historic price increases for some of our most commonly bought items. Denver 7 is digging through the data to show you which prices are rising fastest. So a pretty active radar out there. I'll let you know if it's going to be a swing or a miss tonight for the All-Star Game. Plus, sorry for the inconvenience. We have the story behind this viral sign. 
and you'll meet a Parker kid whose wild idea for a baseball card is becoming reality. I gave him this idea of making their own M&M, a companion card. 